Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. I am CL Whiteside, and this is brought to you by Time of Grace Ministry. I know, I know y'all are trying to grow spiritually. So don't forget about timeofgrace.org. Tons of resources on there. Daily devotions. We got other podcasts. My podcast sister, Amber L.B. Swenson. She's doing her thing. We got Pastor Mike Sermons. We got Grace Talks, other videos, taboo topics, all type of stuff on there. So I know you want to be spiritually fed and you want to stay hydrated. So timeofgrace.org is the place to be. Check it out. Our first world problem question today is this. Let's say this is a hypothetical. This is a straight up like first world problem. Let's say God is like, you know what? I'm going to put the devil and demons on lockdown for an entire year. Do you think that you would sin that year? Do you think that you would sin that year? If there was no demons, no devil for an entire year, would you sin that year? And how much do you think evil and craziness would go down? Like, would the rate drop in our world? I almost want to give you the answer. I don't know if I should, though. I like, I really want to give you the answer to this, but we're going to talk a lot about this in, in dinner time. But I want to hear from you, Instagram or Twitter. My handle is championlife23. If you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments right now. We're going to have a lot of questions for you to think about today. But our first world problem question is this. There's no devil. There's no demons. Would you sin? And how much would evil drop? Would the rate of evil drop in our world? And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode is Satan doesn't make you bad, but the spirit makes you good. And preparing for this episode, I sent a question to about 10 to 15 of my friends. I text them this question and I want you to answer this question too. The question was this. I said, one to a hundred, how good are you? One to a hundred, how good are you? I'm not giving you any context. And in fact, you can add context to your answer. And I got a bunch of different responses. I got anything from 92. I think 92 was the highest. The average was probably like somewhere in the 70s and 80s. The lowest that I had a person give me was 40. But I want you to think about yourself personally. What number would you give yourself? One to, one to 100, how good are you? And like I said, you can add the context that you want to it. Get that number. All right, you got that number. Now, throughout this podcast episode, I want you to be thinking about the number that you gave yourself. And the first thing I want to talk about on this episode of Satan doesn't make you bad, but the spirit makes you good is there are some realizations that that we need to have because we're going to look at this from a spiritual standpoint, especially we're going to look at this from a biblical standpoint. One of the realizations that we have to have is that we are naturally good. Sometimes people are like, you know, people are inherently good. They're OK. They're, they're pretty good. They can they can be OK. And I want you to even think like most people will look at a baby and say, man, a baby is so innocent. A baby is so perfect. But it's like that's cap. like babies can be some of the most selfish people of all time. And I honestly think that that babies are, are selfish. And we know without a doubt that babies are sinful. Psalm 51 verse 5 tells you, tells us, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Now, this is what I think. And you can disagree with me or not. The only reason that babies don't take over the world is because they can't. They literally can't do it. But have you ever heard a baby scream or, or cry? Like if they could, they would. They just literally can't take over the world. Otherwise, they would. And sometimes you look and sometimes people are like, you know, you have to teach a baby to do bad things. And it's like you don't necessarily need to do that. Babies learn very, very quick how to be manipulative, how to get their way, how to scream and to fuss. And some people say that's just because they're hungry. Or that's because they want something. 
be everything they want. We're not inclined to know exactly what we want as human beings. We might think that, but but we aren't. So when it comes down to it, so many times people are like, I only did this because demons or or the devil tempted me to do this. But when you think about this, a lot of times the devil and, and demons aren't tempting us to do some of the things that we do. We have a sinful nature. So that's one of the first realizations that I want us to just think about. We aren't naturally good. The second realization that we have to talk about and, and we have to realize that we have is that we can't choose or find God. We can't choose or find God. Sometimes I hear people say like, you know, I accepted Jesus into my life. I was searching for the truth and I found God. But it's like we can't choose God. And in fact, we have to have a realization that before Jesus Christ, before the Holy Spirit giving us faith, we were an absolute enemy to God. We were an absolute enemy to, to God. And, and look at what Ephesians 2 verse 8 through 9 says. And, and we've talked about this passage before and you've probably heard it before, but you got to really just look at it and break it down. It says, for it is by grace, for it is by grace, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, you notice it didn't say for it is by your great choices. It didn't say for it is by you accepting Christ as your savior. It didn't. It doesn't say for it is by you finding the truth for it is by you being a good person. It does not say that it says for it is by grace. You have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Because a lot of us will be boasting. A lot of us look at our faith and we think it's a good work. And it's like, man, I was so good that God had to come and find me and he had to get me. No, that that that's not true at all. And that passage breaks it down very clearly like that is not the case. We have to have a realization that we are by nature, we are dead in our sin. By nature, we are dead in our sin. We are powerless to believe or to turn to, to God and say, Jesus, you are my savior. I'm making you my savior. We need the son of God. We need the son of God to make us alive and free us from death and sin. And we need the Holy Spirit to give us give us that gift. Now, think about this. What's our natural relationship towards God without Jesus? What's our natural relationship towards God without Jesus? Think about that. Do you, do you think about that at all? There is this church term called total depravativity and what that's talking about is all of us are sinful all of us deserve the wrath of god all of us have the the guilt of adam's sin passed down to us like we are inherently infected by sin like the entire human race is and since we are all by nature sinners we are all under the the wrath of god and since we are under the wrath of god there are three things that we oftentimes don't realize that, that we are when we don't have Jesus. The first thing is we are naturally hostile towards God. Look at what Romans 8 verse 7 through 8 says. It says, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Like they can never please God. What they do, what they do does not please God. We are hostile to God and we can't submit to his laws. We are by nature. We're, we're enemies of God. We are. It's a fact. So ever since Adam and Eve and the fall into sin, humans have inherited sin and we have evil desires because of that. So we first thing first, we are hostile to God. The second thing is we are spiritually blind. We can we can't see. We out here like Stephen Wonder. We, we we can't see. First Corinthians two verse fourteen says, "The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit." So, if you can't see God, if you if you are spiritually blind, you can't see God. You can't turn to God. You can't find something that you can't see because we are spiritually blind. The third thing we have to realize is we are absolutely dead in sin. And if you are dead in sin, that means you can't move. You can't do anything. We are dead in sin. Ephesians 2 verse 1 tells us this. As for you, 
you were dead in your transgressions and sins. You can't move. You can't do anything. It's nothing. Like, ah, I'm dead. I can't, can't, can't do anything. So I didn't tell you all this to make you sad, though. I did not tell you all this to make you sad, but for you to be amazed, to be absolutely amazed at God's grace and him giving each and every one of us a, a new appreciation on the faith that we have been gifted with. Like, that's the only reason I told you all this stuff. So you can be amazed at, at God's grace. Why are you alive through Christ? Because the Holy Spirit did his thing. He did it. And, and something that I realized about myself, when you really think about the fact that, all right, I'm hostile towards God, I'm spiritually blind, I'm dead in my sin apart from Jesus Christ, like that's how I that's how I was. It really helps you look at people differently. Like I'm not looking at people so cross-eyed like, why aren't you saved? Like, why can't you just get right? Come on, man. Why can't you get right? Because I see that I'm saved because of because of the Holy Spirit. That's it. It, it. It's a miracle. Like I am saved because of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not looking at somebody so crazy and cross eyed and like, bro, why you ain't saved? Why can't you get right? Because the Holy Spirit did it. The Holy Spirit did it. It wasn't me. The Holy Spirit did it. And when we don't credit the Holy Spirit, what happens is we become conceited and we become egotistical. And I want to look at these two different approaches that come from Luke chapter 18. This is Luke chapter 18, starting at verse nine to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Jesus told this parable. It says two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. I'm not like the robbers. I'm not like the evildoers. I'm not like the adulterers or even like this tax collector. You know what I do? I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. Now, think about this. I want to stop right there. When I said, what are you one to 100? It is natural. It is so natural to compare to other people. And a lot of times, who do we compare to? We compare to the robbers. We compare to the evildoers. We compare to the adulterers. We compare to the people that's like, I'm definitely better than him. I might not be as good as him, but I'm definitely better than him and her. And, and, and it's natural to compare. But what are we supposed to be compared to? What is the actual standard? The actual standard is perfection. A hundred percent every single time you take the test or the quiz. Every single time your participation points better be 100 percent. Verse 13 says this. But the tax collector, he stood at a distance. He would not look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, he was realizing that he still had a sinful nature and we still have a sinful nature as well. Verse 14 says, says Jesus says this. He said, I tell you that this man rather than the other went home justified before God for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now the Pharisee, did you catch the Pharisee? The Pharisee thought that he had earned salvation or he was good enough for God. So it's like, he really didn't even need a savior. Cause I can, I can do this by myself. I am that good. I am that much better than this person or that person. But you look at the tax collector, the tax collector knew how horrible he was. And because of the Holy spirit, he had a different perspective. He had a completely different perspective. Do you see that now? With this perspective, it brings light to how we should talk and how we we might be coming at, at different audiences. So two different ways to, to come at people. Right. So when you are saved, I will say the first audience, let's say you have someone who I would say is a free agent. Um, they are confused. They are, are lost. I think about the woman at the well or the Samaritan woman. How did Jesus come at them? Jesus came at them with truth. He came at them with love. He came at them with patience. He came at them with a way different and gentle approach. Now, comparing this to someone who's conceited and someone who's egotistical, someone who's trying to intimidate you or somebody who's promoting false doctrine, somebody who's acting like a, a Pharisee, we sometimes forget that Jesus flipped the tables. So sometimes we got Jesus flipping tables and sometimes Jesus came with a gentle approach, but it's, 
it's interesting to see the different audiences get different responses because sometimes you need to be you need to really stand firm and like okay i'm gonna tell you what the truth is and sometimes it's a gentle and loving approach and that's something where the spirit can guide us on which approach we we should use now for us to think think about on this episode of satan doesn't make you bad but the spirit makes you good we have to realize there there's a great realization that we have to realize when we were apart from the spirit of god that should give you, or I should say, I'll speak for myself. That gave me a new motivation on sharing the gospel with people because faith comes from the gospel and it comes from the sacrament of baptism and sharing the gospel it comes from the water and the word. And it also comes just from, from, from the word. Now I hadn't thought about this. I can't even lie to you. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I talk about this sometimes with my friends about what if we just took a water hose and we just started spraying people and saying, I baptize you in the name of God, the father, God, the son and God, the Holy Spirit. Like I thought about that. That's crazy, though. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's where people are like, man, them, them Christians crazy. They like a little cold over there. So I'm not encouraging anybody to do that. But that's just kind of how I have thought. But Romans 10 verse 17 reminds us, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So even if you did something crazy like that, you would need to give people the word so that the seed is planted in water. Don't do that, though. Don't don't really do that. Water people and then say, I baptize your name, God, the father. That's that's crazy. And then just just thinking out loud, a awe moment like our heavenly father comes up with the perfect plan. And that's what the gospel is. The perfect plan of salvation. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He knew we couldn't do it. He literally knew we couldn't do it. So he sent his son to be born of a woman, born under the law to redeem us. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And on this episode of Satan doesn't make you bad, but the spirit makes you good. There is a good chance when you think about some of the horrific and crazy things that you have done, I'm talking about the things that make you want to vomit. There's a good chance that you were not tempted, especially directly by Satan. There's a chance you weren't even tempted by demons. There's a good chance that it was just your flesh fleshing and you were given into your evil desires. Or at least I, I can admit that. And I can say that because it's like Satan doesn't have time to tempt and to pride on each and every person it's how many billions of people is it on, on this earth so sometimes we want to give him credit when it's like no that was just my flesh fleshing and what you realize with that is we're not naturally good we're not naturally good and we still have a sinful nature even for those who are, are saved and even for those who who are christians and that sinful nature needs to get crucified daily in, in each and every day now there's a realization there's another realization that we got to have you are absolutely great. You are absolutely great in terms of status when you are a believer. You are great in terms of status when you when it comes to being a believer. And I mean really good. And it's not because of what you have done or, or what I have done, but it's because we are seen as perfect since Jesus traded place with us. Jesus traded places with us, so we are seen as great. We are Our status is good. It's declared not guilty. He gave us that status and it sticks. Look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 says. I'm going to go with the NLT version. It says, God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy. He freed us from sin. He freed us from sin. So when I ask that question, one to a hundred, how good are you? Think about that from a spiritual sense. Think about that from a spiritual sense. One to a hundred, how good are you when it comes in terms of status? Like you, you a hundred, you real good. You, you real good. I'm guessing you weren't probably thinking in terms of status. You were thinking in terms of other things, but I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And what I noticed when I asked that question, think of it from one to a hundred. There were so many people who talked about like, you know, I'm not going to give myself a, a 90 or there are so many ways that I need to grow. There are so many flaws that I have. There are so many shortcomings that I have. They could see and admit like, man, I got some ugly, deep, dark secrets 
and I got some skeletons in the closet that I don't want anybody to know. And I, I can I can agree with that. I'm on, I'm on the same page as you. And that was a big reason why a lot of people said I can't give myself 100 or even give myself the 90s or, or the 80s. They, they realize, like, I, I'm not good. But you still can be really, really confident as a believer of God. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So, yes, people have to grow. I need to grow. There are some areas I definitely I got my flaws. I got my shortcomings as well. But when you think about this passage, it should give you confidence like, man, oh, anyone is in Christ. I'm in Christ. New creation has come. Oh, that's new creation for me. The old has gone and, and the new is here. And that is here for us believers. Now, I was watching or I was listening to one of Pastor Mike's sermons when I'm cutting the grass. You don't know Pastor Mike. That's time of grace. Lead speaker, lead pastor. OK. And he can't he was talking about just having childlike faith and the reason why it's so important to be like a child. And I'm going to share this with you. And the passage he, he was talking about was Matthew 18, verse two. And this is something for us to think as believers and followers of Christ. Matthew 18, verse two says he called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of, of heaven. And I was like, what is he getting at with this? And then he said, this is this is what he's getting. at." And I thought this was genius. What Jesus is talking about with this is how children are helplessly dependent on their parents. And they pretty much have no shame in dependent on their parents. Are you and I dependent on? On our Lord and Savior? Are we dependent on our Heavenly Father? Are we dependent on the Spirit? Now, when you think about uh, uh, the grand scheme of things, so many times we want to say that the devil made me do it or Satan tempted me to do it. The devil didn't make us, the devil doesn't make us do a, a lot of things. In fact, he doesn't even have to tempt us for us to do it. What, what it comes down to is we're not good. <laughs> we are not naturally good. The second thing we got to realize with this is children know children know they are dependent on their parents. And like I said, they don't have any shame. Mom, mom, mommy, mom, mom, dad, dad, daddy, dad. Parents get tired of hearing their name. Like, stop calling my name, dude. But children are so dependent and they don't care. They don't have any shame. You go to the store, they're touching everything. Can I have this? Give me this. Give me that. Like, no. Did I tell you when we get into the store? Don't touch anything. But they don't care. They're constantly in communication with their heavenly father. Or I should say their mother and their father. But that's how we can simulate or use the illustration. We we need to be in communication with our Heavenly Father. And a question I got to ask you. Could you make it to the age that you are right now if you didn't have parents? No, you couldn't make it. If you had nobody in your life, could you make it to the age that you are with nobody helping you out? And the answer is no. No, because literally someone had to give you what you needed. Someone had to take care of you. Someone had to wipe your butt and wipe your nose. Hopefully not with the same towel. But it's like you couldn't have made it without people literally taking care of you. Like no baby can do anything for themselves. They can't feed themselves. They can't wash themselves. They can't clothe themselves. They can't do anything. They are dependent on on someone and they know they depended on someone that's why they screaming and they crying they're trying to get your attention they're trying to like help 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 but they don't say help help now this is the same when it comes to our faith and this is the same when it comes to our salvation but what happens is we get to be like teenagers we're talking about maturity in the sense because the bible talks about us being like infants at times we get to a certain age where we like or a certain maturity we're like i can do this on my own I don't need God anymore or I never needed him. It's like you forgot the stages where you were a, a baby. You forgot the stages where you were an infant. Don't you realize that God has done everything for you? God is where you why you are at the point you are. And like I said, when it comes to our faith and our salvation, it is because it's been gifted to us. It's been given to us. It has nothing to do with you and I working or achieving so much. It, it absolutely doesn't. And I just thought about like thinking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, man, I, I want to talk to the Holy Spirit. I, I hope and my prayer is that the Holy Spirit um, reveals to anyone who's depraved in this way to realize like how corrupt and how wicked and how ratchet we all are apart from Christ. 
and create that spark of trust in, in, in Jesus. If you don't, if you like, I don't know about the Jesus. I hope the Holy Spirit is working on you right now to create that that spark and to convert you in that re- regard. And for those who do believe, just remind each and every one of us, remind us on the fact that we need to make sure that we are, are showing grace and remember the grace that we are, are given and then water the seed that the Holy Spirit ha- has blessed us with and, and take care of the gift that he ha- has given us. And to wrap this episode up of Satan doesn't make you bad, but the spirit makes you good. Think about that again when I asked you one to a hundred, how good are you? Like we have to praise God and, and glorify him for making us good and making us meet the standard of a hundred. Because what did Jesus do for us? Jesus paid a debt we never could pay. He was our mediator. He was our go-between. He died on the cross for us. He paid for every single person's sin. He suffered. He suffered hell for us. He, he resurrected. He humbled himself. Like we wouldn't have a shot. We literally could not do it. And then when you really think about it as well, it's like we didn't create faith on our own. The Holy Spirit went and got us. The Holy Spirit worked faith in our heart. We didn't turn to God. We didn't find God. And sometimes we think that. So it's 100 percent God. It is 100 percent God on why we have faith, saving faith. And and look at what Romans chapter five, verse one says. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God of God. So I'm going to say this again. Satan doesn't make you bad, but the spirit makes you good. And this is the non-microwave truth. Thanks for joining me on this episode today. Make sure you share this with a friend, leave a review, hit the five star, and just think about that. Like a whole new perspective when you see people who are like, man, they don't, they're like, I don't know about the whole Jesus thing or people who don't believe. Grace grace and mercy give them grace and mercy and remember the grace and mercy that you have been shot with and and share the truth with them share the gospel with them because then the holy spirit can do his thing peace punch captain crunch to know the drugs and yes to jesus i am out